Well, it was nice of the rain to stop. I was thinking the same thing. Very nice. Good morning. It is the morning of day one of our trip, right? Seven. Seven. It is the morning of day seven of our trip. So after today, we'll be we've been on the on the road on this overlanding adventure for uh, a week. out to be an awesome little spot we found here you know private and just beautiful sandy esker country and uh, sparse wooded area and we had a jolly old time around the fire last night had a nice meal and just hung out around the fire as a family it was actually really really wonderful i woke up last night when the rain started coming down hard but it's completely dry in that bomb proof tent I have. But then, because the ceiling moved in um, and there's a cloud cover, it warmed things up a lot. So then I went back to sleep with the pitter patter of rain and then I woke up basically soaked in sweat because I have a minus 40 sleeping bag and all of a sudden it got really warm. So I, I ended up ripping off my sweater and completely unzipping my sleeping bag and falling peacefully back to sleep at the perfect temperature just using it as a blanket so best night's sleep i've had i'd say in a, in a little while really today we're going to um push through happy valley goose bay we, i was considering doing a little uh, uh partridge hunting around here but um it's dark <laughs> So I think we're not going to do that today. And uh, we're going to push through Happy Valley Goose Bay. Um, we want to do some laundry. There's, Huddy's had a few blowouts. You know, Wesley's clothes are uh, a little dirty. Basically, all the kids' clothes are dirty. So we're going to do uh, um, some laundry at a laundry mat because there's one in Happy Valley Goose Bay. And then, uh, yeah, that's probably about three hours away. And then we're going to camp um, about a half hour outside of town. So we only have, you know, we'll call it three and a half, four hours today. Um, on the road which is a pretty peaceful pace kids are still sleeping um tori's uh, already got wesley strapped into the truck so i just got to put the uh fold the rooftop tent up and we'll be on our way
We are just uh, in Goose Bay, Labrador right now, enjoying a little stroll at Birch Island Park with the kids. Doing a little laundry. Come on, honey. And while we're doing that, I looked up uh, an old contact of mine here, Joe Gowdy, who just won the order of Newfoundland and Labrador. Basically, just he gave us a drive, a shuttle on the Trans Labrador Highway when I finished a canoe trip. So, looked him up, chatted with him, put some laundry in the machine, and posted some uh, photos to social media so everybody can follow along. Honey, you're holding up the party. Mama. 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 Anywho, lots of fun. There you go, bud. How you doing, Westman? Are you enjoying the walk? Okay, so we're done in Goose Bay. We got a tip that there is a, a place to potentially camp outside of Goose Bay. It used to be a campground, now it's just like closed and anyone can camp there basically. So we're doing a little bit of scouting. We're driving down a bumpy road and it seems we found a place that maybe we can call home for the night. What about like down that way? Could we get out that way? Should I go scout it out? Well, we found an abandoned summer camp. What could possibly go wrong here? <laughs> is, is this a summer camp? No, it's a tr it's like a, a camping park, basically. God, but, if it were an abandoned summer camp, we'd be peeling out of here for speed. Yeah, so basically it just, it looks like a spot where, you know, there even used to be like a snack bar and maybe some life jacket rentals and a bunch of little campsites hacked out of the bush, but it clearly hasn't been operational for quite some time. So we just pulled up here, prime real estate, no one else is here. And we just pulled up here by uh, Gosling Lake. So that's pretty exciting. Our spot is on kind of a slant anyway. So we might be able to jack one side of the trailer up and level it off a bit, which would be pretty sweet. And, uh, yeah, make a nice little campsite here and call it home for the night. I'm not going to be able to do any like partridge hunting here because it's like a campground. Yesterday's spot would have been perfect for that, but Tori needed to rush us all off to do laundry. So, you know, I haven't really said anything Priorities. about that. We have lots of meat. I didn't want to vocalize that directly to her. She's a very good mom and wants to make sure the kids have clean clothes, which she completely did while I paid bills and like posted to social media so she did all the work anyways i picked up um a new kind of beer while we were gassing up in town this is called india beer it's an india pale ale i don't know it's a gold medal winner and um it's man's best friend is a locally manufactured right here it says newfoundland labrador so i'm gonna try one of those 5% alcohol. You can see the can there. Molson Coors Canada, I guess, owns the brand. And there's a picture of a Labrador retriever on the front. Absolutely delicious. Would it's I like, like a, it? Yeah, it just tastes amazing. It tastes like a crisp lager. Black flies. In October. To a beautiful spot. Have the whole place to ourselves. Look. Fresh and clean. Uh, this was literally saturated in chocolate milk or like his meal replacement formula. It was like soggy and brown. It was. Chocolate milk. So this is really the sole reason why I did laundry. <laughs> How 
Anymore where that came from. Should I bust out the chainsaw for this? Honey, I mean, you brought it. Might as well use it. Yeah, that, I can't find a small saw either. All I want is this whole life. A little bit of house and a food to watch. Picnic table out on the lawn. A couple of kids and a couple of dogs. Work all day to half past five. Chain link fence and gravel drive. Wind time ringing on my front porch. A brand new carpet on every floor. And a rope swing tied around the limb of a tall oak tree. It don't sound like much. Every day of the week, a big soft chair for when I'm old, a tackle box and a fishing pole. I don't care about a forge and a fame, I just don't want to know my mailman's name. At Christmas time, I'm gonna leave him a gingerbread cookie. It don't sound like much, but it sure is. Tori's been um, doing the line share of the cooking, so I'm gonna cook dinner tonight. Um, we have some looks like arctic char we have here and this was uh, given to us by Friends in Labrador City. Heather is from Makovic and she's Labrador Inuit So her family gave it to her last time she was home and she gave some to us So awesome gift because Atlantic salmon and char for that matter is probably my favorite food If not one of my favorite foods in the entire world Just put those in these pans, put them on low, added just a little salt and pepper and garlic, what we had, and some butter. And um, I put these two uh, plates on top of it and just to kind of bake them a little bit. Well, we forgot a cutting board, so we've been using cardboard. We have this lettuce that we picked. We haven't eaten it yet, but it's lasted pretty long. And me and Tori grew this lettuce in our vegetable garden. So I'm gonna make a salad out of this lettuce that Tori and I grew.
Okay, another round of fish coming up. Tori, she's hungry, she didn't really get enough. And uh, I could go for another round too, so we're gonna do it up a little differently this time. Oh, a little bit of weather's blowing in here. So I'm gonna tin foil wrap it. Something tells me it's gonna be pretty good. Perfect coffee this morning, huh? Yeah. Howdy. Where are you going? What are you getting all fired up about there, bud? Good morning, Labrador. We are just staying um, uh, on a lake called Gosling Lake, closer to Northwest River than to Goose Bay, Labrador. And it's uh, basically um, a 
shut down campsite that anybody could camp on for free now so we just pulled up only people here took this prime real estate right by the water and uh, had a really nice evening there is a sign um, like a, a provincial official sign saying no open fires so maybe they just want to keep uh, you know things as safe as possible that they're letting people camp here I guess it's provincially owned land so Tori and I just had a fire in our wood stove which worked quite nicely because we were able to cook our second round of char right on the wood stove which worked out great it was actually the first one I kind of fried and sort of poached it or kind of baked it a bit on a pan with a plate over top of well, this one we did in tin foil and uh, I think it probably was actually a little better it's day eight of our trip uh, yesterday we, we we're gonna get going earlier and, and put some miles behind us and then stop for breakfast but instead we uh, we slept in not ragingly late but it's eight o'clock now so we probably slept in till about quarter past seven or something like that and we're basically going to load this stuff into the truck and go it's only about a six hour drive from here to Blanc Sablon which is the end of the road and from the end of the road you can actually take a ferry along these roadless maritime Quebec coasts where where there's um, a few interesting communities called St. Augustine and you can take that ferry to Kagaska which is where the road ends just past Natashkorn the road that we cut north off of um, from Bay Como continues to Natashkorn and you can take a ferry between those two points however we're taking a ferry the other way a shorter distance over to the northern peninsula to St. Barb and uh, yeah we're going to visit uh, Lanso Meadows and then head south to Portland Creek where I'm going to meet up with um, Portland Creek Outfitters and uh, I'm going to head into the bush. The whole family is going to jump on a float plane, go stay in a cabin. We're going to hunt moose and uh, then we're going to head over to Gross Morn. So yeah, we <laughs> this is week one, Tori. We have like two and a half weeks left. I know. <laughs> But this whole part of our trip is pretty much going to be over for a while, eh? Yeah, like we'll be in a cabin, but like staying stationary is almost easier because yeah. like I could wash clothes at the cabin and hang them up to dry in the cabin. Yeah. It's when we're driving and I have nowhere to hang dry clothes. Like I could wash them in the lake or whatever, but I have nowhere to hang dry them is why I had to go to a laundromat. Right. Like I could have washed them and then put them in a bag and then just put them in the dryer at the laundromat, but it's it's letting them dry and not having like a clothesline and not being in one spot. And then also it's so cold out that nothing is drying. Like yeah. I've been trying to dry out this one thing dry a little bit, finally, after just mm. leaving it like that for three days. But it's so cold yeah. out here that like nothing's really drying. Yeah, yeah. But I don't know, I think the cabin will be a nice change of pace for us. Yeah, agreed. And then I'm super excited to go to Gross Morn. I don't mind if it's cold, I just hope we don't get too much rain, you know? But uh, yeah, so now we're heading back into um, an area where we won't have reception for some time and it should be really cool. So more beautiful country to come. We're very excited. We're just gonna, uh, I'm gonna have another coffee and finish packing up and uh, get a little bit of food into Wesley and hit the road. Good boy. 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 Good